А почему вы такая грустная? А? Я не понимаю, почему вы так радуетесь. Да знаете, приятно упасть с интересной женщины. The dominant, all-powerful factor of the film image is rhythm, expressing the course of time within the frame. One cannot conceive of a cinematic work with no sense of time passing through the shot, but one can easily imagine a film with no actors, music, decors, and even editing. Editing is bringing together shots which are already filled with time and organizes the unified living structure inherent in the film and the time that pulsates through the blood vessels of the film making it alive is of varying rhythmic pressure Andrei Tarkovsky Among all the art forms cinema shares a unique relationship with music because both flow in time. Consider the three basic elements of music. Melody, rhythm and harmony. Three notes from left to right form a melody. When they are set in the framework of a time signature, rhythms are overlaid on the melody. When we rearrange them vertically, the result is harmony. Cinema offers the same possibility of rhythm, harmony and melody. The film narrative is akin to melody. The mechanical nature of the film medium allows strict control of the timeline, down to the accuracy of 1 24th of a second. Editing brings in the rhythm in the narrative melody. Six elements, men, music, light, landscape, color, and motion. In a shot and between a number of shots. So all these brought into one integral whole by a single piercing emotion. Filmmakers began experimenting with the musical potential of the new art very early on. Abstract or avant-garde films had depended on musical theory for much of their effect. Innovative filmmakers discovered musical potential of the images. Sergei Eisenstein, in his film Alexander Nevsky, constructed his images to go with the musical score written by Prokofiev. So did Stanley Kubrick in his film 2001 A Space Odyssey. The similarity between the two art forms, cinema and music, go beyond these fundamentals. A film may be structured like a musical composition, a symphony or a concerto or a sonata form. It is usually a piece of music that is composed for a solo instrument like the piano. It could be the violin or it could be a flute. The music is structured 
around the solo instrument and all the importance is given to the solo instrument. Usually a sonata could be in three separate movements. The traditional format was we have a fast movement to start with, a slower movement and finally a movement which is again very fast. This is the simple structure in which most beginners have understood their first sonatas. When we move on to a concerto, that is where this solo instrument, which was given all importance during the sonata, has got a full orchestra to back it and support it. What I mean by support is, the solo instrument would play the main melody, the orchestra would develop on the idea. Sometimes the orchestra would also add a lot of complex harmony to that idea and make it a beautiful piece of music. Again, we would have several movements and the movements may vary in their tempo. They may vary in the compositional structure. They may also vary in the key signature. By key signature, I mean the scale in which that particular music has been composed. We could move from the main key to its relative minor or to its dominant and then come back to the main key again. A symphony is actually synthesis of a lot of sounds. The whole idea of the symphony is to actually put together a lot of instruments to play together not necessarily the same melody, but to contribute each instrument in its own register, contributing to the music and making it very, very rich in harmony. It is possible to have the piccolo, which is a very small flute, taking the higher notes, whereas you have the cello and the double bass in the string section playing all the lower notes and we have a middle range with the soloists taking their individual parts. So a symphony is really a very, very grand composition. Satyajit Ray once pinned down in the basic problem of Indian movies in their lack of a structured form available in most Western films. He said, Indian directors tend to overlook the musical aspects of a film structure. The reason lies surely in the absence of a dramatic narrative tradition in Indian music. Western classical music underwent a process of humanization with the invention of the sonata form. With their masculine first subjects and feminine second subjects and their interweaving and progress through a series of dramatic key changes to a point of culmination. But he continued, a raga is a raga with its single predetermined mood and tonality. Perhaps with some stretch of imagination, one could think of a film subject that might be built up like the development of a raga. But I cannot think of this as a form with wide applications. Music and cinema have gone hand in hand from the very early days. Music came into cinema in the days of the silent movie. The pianist illustrated what was happening on the screen with a musical accompaniment appropriate to the rhythm and emotional pitch of the visual image. Musical accompaniments continued even in the sound era. In fact, a major motivation for the Warner Brothers to switch over to sound was to offer the pleasure of accompaniment 
of an A grade orchestra to the small town audience. Music can set a scene in a certain mood and underline its emotion. Music can define a character. Who's being represented by these three French horns? Right, the wolf. The duck. You're batting a thousand, the bird. Music can create suspense. Music can warn the viewer of an impending crisis. And music can mentally prepare the viewer for a happy reunion. Andrei Tarkovsky said, I find music in film most acceptable when it is used as a refrain. Used this way, music does more than intensify the impression of the visual image by providing a parallel illustration of the same idea. With the introduction of the musical progression, the life recorded in the frame can change its color and sometimes even its essence. I could quote uh, Raghu Romeo, the film of uh, Rajat Kapoor. Raghu falls in love with uh, a, a television star. The relationship of love develops until a point is reached that the highest uh, projection of the love of the two heroes that can be reached. and. Uh, Automati automatically, you, you, you need more. But in the tradition of the Hindi film, suddenly you have Raghu, who is dressed like a prince, uh, the lady like a princess, and they start dancing. I thought, ah, this is a good example of what uh, Bharat Muni says that at one point you must jump uh, to a higher level. It cannot be a slow progression on the same level. Tarkovsky continued. Properly used, music has the capacity to change the whole emotional tone of a filmed sequence. It must be so completely one with the visual image that if it were to be removed from a particular episode, the visual image would not just be weaker in its idea and its impact, it would also be qualitatively different. If I go simply by what I read in the script, my imagination may not quite match with what the director has imagined. I have often given it a thought, having read the script, and when I actually had a preview of the film, I found that the director's pictorial view was completely different from what I had thought of. So in my later works, I would always rely on the rush prints when they came in. I would take a look at them. And when telecine transfers came in, I would ask for a copy of the rush prints so that I could look at it at leisure, keep watching it over and over again and allow the film to grow on me. I would use the script as a guideline to tell me whether I had some underlying dialogues in the portions in which I thought music was essential to lend support to the film. Other than that, the most important part of it was reacting to the visuals and reacting to the mood and pace of the film. 
When it came to choice of instruments, acoustic instruments were always what one had in mind. But sometimes given budgetary constraints, time constraints, it is difficult to organize acoustic instruments. But the point that I would like to make here is that it is not the instrument which is important. Because music is only a very, very important supporting structure for the film. What it must do, according to me, is play an underlying role so unassuming that even when it is playing, a member of the audience who is viewing the film for the first time may not even realize that some music is being played. But the support that music lends to the film by creating the ambience, by creating the atmosphere, enriches that moment so much that if there were any deficiencies in the film itself, if it were too quiet or if the mood were not quite right, it is possible to compensate with the use of appropriate music. Hrithik Ghatak has written Music is highly suggestive. Let us say, I use a bandish of Raga Kalavati for a love scene towards the beginning of a film. I would play the same piece of music for the scene of final disaster and ultimate separation at the close of the film. Only then would music make its point. One of the most important things about sound design is that less is more. One should be very careful while using music. Shottajit Rai was one of the masters at applying music. And although in his earlier films there's a lot of music, gradually you find that he uses music only when necessary. And that music is subservient to the plot. For my own films, I get my ideas fairly quickly, sometimes as early as in the scenario stage. I jot them down as they come. Usually they come clothed in a certain orchestral color. And I make a note of that too. But the actual work of scoring has to wait until I'm through with everything else, including final cutting. The final pleasure, of course, is in finding out that the music not only sounds right, but is also right for the scene for which it was meant. Recall the scene from Hitchcock's Psycho, where the music merges with the wail of the girl. Although the music director, Bernard Herrmann, achieved this effect with violence, Nowadays, it is much more easily achievable electronically. Let us recall Tarkovsky once again. Instrumental music is artistically so autonomous that it is far harder for it to dissolve into the film. Electronic music, on the other hand, has the capacity for being absorbed into the sound. It can be hidden behind other noises and remain indistinct, like the voice of nature, of vague intimations. It can be like somebody breathing. In today's world, electronics play such an important role in our lives that we just cannot ignore their influence. It has also made it possible for us to use electronic music to meet the demands of limited budgets, limited time and a composer's demand for greater accuracy in terms of pitch, in terms of timing and in terms of the effect that is generated. I for myself have used complete electronic music in several of my films and 
sometimes I have chosen to use sounds which bear no resemblance to any acoustic instruments at all. And they have been very, very effective. We have a little excerpt here from a film directed by Aparna Sen called Jugant. The brief that was given to me was that there is this seagull which is failing to surface uh, from an oil slick which was generated during the Gulf War. This is a very famous clip which probably was projected by BBC and it had really had a very, very long lasting impact on the minds of people. Having heard the brief, I thought that the only way I could compose music for a dance which was conceived from this idea was to use electronics as well as possible. This entire piece that you're going to hear now is composed on a Korg synthesizer and it only simulates imaginative sounds but it does lend an aura which is quite interesting. Satyajit Ray wrote in his book, Our Films, Their Films. To the vast conglomerate mass that makes up the Indian public, the cinema is the only form of available, inexpensive entertainment. Yet, the craving for spectacle, for romance, for a funny turn or two, for singing and dancing remains. And somehow, it has to be met. If the film does not meet it, nothing else will. The remarkable thing is that the practice is so old, so widespread and so ingrained that we tend to lose sight of the unique traits that it has developed. I once read the critique of a Hindi film in an American magazine which actually praised the use of songs as a Brechtian alienation device something which purposely makes the spectator aware of the artificiality of the whole thing. The music reinforces the storytelling, reinforces some particular words. And uh, this potential role of music was already uh, mentioned very strongly by Bharat Muni in the Natya Shastra. Because he took it from the point of view of uh, arousing an emotion in the audience. Ritik Ghatak argues. We are an epic people. We like to sprawl. We are not so much involved in story intrigues. We like to be retold the same myths and legends again and again. The basic folk forms are always kaleidoscopic, pageant-like, relaxed, discursive, and their contents have been very well known for thousands of years. And always, music has retained a decisive part in them. Dramatic performance is created for the public. You, you don't have a a, a, a drama on the stage without a, an audience. It's meant for a public. And therefore, the playwright, the director, and the producer should take as their final authority regarding the art, the form, the public. And he adds, not the expert. Let us conclude this episode with Gotok's words. 
the sound film has extended its scope, even as it has plunged into a search for something else, maybe into sadhana, to reach the unspeakable, intense unity that belongs to music, the ultimate art. But without an ambience of its own, no art becomes an art. The film provides an ambience, a total design to sound. <laughs>